So thank you all very much for coming today. Um, I'd like to welcome our keynote speaker, um, who is Dr. Chris Grover, Senior Lecturer, Head of Department at Lancaster University. Um, Chris has been uh, working in the space of social security benefits and unemployment payments, particularly for people with disability, um, for a number of years. Um, and he's recently um, published in the area of this idea of, of social murder, which I think is what he's going to um, present on today. Uh, so, yeah, without further ado, um, I'd like to introduce Dr. Chris Thank you, uh, Louise. Um, before I start, I, I would like to uh, acknowledge the traditional owners of the country. Please excuse us, but we do have to... No, please, please. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks very much, uh, Auntie Norma. Um, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the country on which we are uh, today uh, uh, meeting. Um, I recognise their continuing connection to land, waters and culture, and I pay my respects to their elders, uh, uh, in particular Auntie Norma, past, present and... Um, uh, uh, emerging for, for, the, for the invitation. Um, uh, being, a, being a head of the department, it's nice to get out and actually talk about things that remind you are an academic, uh, actually, rather than an administrator uh, within, um, within the uh, higher education uh, sector. Um, I'm going to talk today about um, uh, benefits for uh, disabled people um, in, the, uh, uh, in the UK. Um, I've been working in this area for about 10 years. Um, now um, and we are in, in, in the UK sort of um, getting on for a decade really into um, cuts to um, benefits for uh, uh, disabled people um, uh, as kind of latterly as a kind of um, an argument about a need for um, austerity need to, to, to reduce uh, public spending within the UK um, but what we see in the UK, and these kind of images are just a few that um, kind of highlight that, is resistance to, uh, to, those, to, those, um, to those cuts. Um, and uh, in many ways, my kind of work is, is informed with uh, an empathy with, the, um, in particular, the disabled people's movement um, uh, in the UK, who, who have attempted to, um, to, to, to resist uh, uh, cuts, not only to benefits, but also to um, care. Uh, um, uh, packages uh, and uh, and so on. So there's a, uh, um, some images there just to explain some of the kind of terminology. DPAC is Disabled People Against the Cuts, which is a kind of um, a national um, uh, uh, kind of uh, organisation. It's loosely kind of uh, organised nationally. There are there are different areas um, where DPAC exists. This is a, a banner from the Norfolk uh, um, uh, Disabled People Against uh, the Cuts, um, and you know they, they don't pull any punches. Um, uh, in terms of uh, what they're focusing upon. They are concerned about deaths that are, are uh, resulting as a consequence of benefit changes um, in the UK. Um, those deaths don't just uh, uh, impact upon uh, disabled people, but uh, disabled people have, been, have really been at the forefront of uh, cuts to, um, uh, to, to, to benefits and, uh, and services. And we're dealing with deaths that are a consequence of really um, destitution um, uh, and uh, as, a, as a consequence of suicide. Okay, there's demanding evidence that um, uh, changes to um, uh, to the benefit system uh, is uh, is playing a large part in, in people uh, killing themselves. And, uh, and as we'll see, there's evidence increasingly of um, uh, coroner's reports uh, and proceedings that highlight um, the lack of body weight. Um, uh, for some people that, that, that they've lost so much weight and now to eat um, uh, uh, that they've been unable to sustain their, their lives um, and so on. So uh, in many ways um, uh, a situation um, which is, you know, is, is really problematic but as an academic is really frustrating um, because the kind of the academic community in many ways sanitizes yeah. or uh, kind of is part of sanitization um, of, 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 of the impacts of uh, what, what in, the, in the UK has been a really brutal period of cuts to, um, to benefits uh, and, and services. I mean, social policy academics, for example, talk about kind of um, 
the uh, 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 increase in uh, uh, use of food banks in the UK, so the charity-based emergency food um, provision, they talk about people having to make choices about whether or not they can eat or keep their homes, mm. but they don't push that analysis any further than that to talk about what the impacts really upon people. And my, 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 my one message is austerity is killing people in the UK. Um, so dead people don't uh, don't claim uh, is kind of uh, uh, the, the the banner that is uh, and the and the, um, uh, and the and the headline in many ways that's used by DPAC. DWP just to explain Department for Work and Pensions, which is the kind of um, uh, uh, national um, uh, uh, government ministry uh, who administer um, uh, 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 benefits. Um, Ian Duncan Smith was the Secretary of State for Work and Pensions who oversaw many of the, um, uh, the cuts. He resigned in, I think it was 20, 2014, after um, four turbulent years as the Secretary of State for Work and, um, uh, Work and Pensions. And then Maximus and Atos, um, who were private sector um, uh, providers of, uh, as we'll see, what's called the Work Capability uh, Assessment. So the assessment that essentially is, is used by decision makers to decide who receives um, disability benefits and who um, uh, and who who doesn't. Uh, so and then the kind of uh, more generally, I guess, kind of protests against um, benefit cuts. So no more deaths from benefit cuts and sanctions uh, 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 kill. And you will be very familiar um, uh, with kind of sanction uh, uh, um, regimes. Right. I'm going to try and use this uh, screen, which is a bit posher than what I'm used to. I have to say. Um, okay, so that's me. Um, I work out of um, what's uh, uh, known at Lancaster as a Centre for Disability um, uh, uh, Research when I'm focusing upon uh, um, disability, disability benefits. Um, today's talk, um, firstly I, I thought I'd introduce um, the main income replacement benefit for disabled people in the UK, it's called Employment um, and, uh, and Support Allowance. It replaced another benefit, it's called Incapacity Benefit in 2000. Uh, an eight. Um, we'll move on to talk about disabled people and, and further austerity because in many ways the employment and support allowance itself was designed to save money um, uh, uh, on spending uh, uh, upon disabled uh, people to channel it into other um, kind of politically more acceptable forms of spending particularly upon um, education uh, uh, pensions and attempting to reduce uh, child, child poverty. Um, and then we're going to go on to kind of think about how uh, uh, we, might, we, we might consider austerity uh, to be uh, a form of structural violence, uh, drawing upon the work of Ian Gultang, um, and also how for, for, uh, uh, we might understand um, uh, austerity for disabled people as being a form of social murder, drawing upon in particular the, the work of uh, uh, Friedrich um, uh, uh, Engels. Okay, so Employment and Support Allowance um, was announced um, in 2006 uh, uh, in, uh, in, in the UK, it was introduced in 2008. The timing is really important, actually, because it was designed in, in a period of, that was fair, economically fairly benign. Okay, the long calm, as um, uh, 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 economists um, uh, described it. Um, and it was designed at, uh, in, in a period when rather... Um, uh, arrogantly, given what was to, uh, to, to occur in 2008, the then uh, UK government was, was saying that it, it had um, it conquered, really. It, it addressed the, 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 the boom and the slump of capitalism uh, uh, in, uh, in, in Britain through its various um, uh, uh, policies. Um, and there was a concern, as we'll see at the time, um, in terms of uh, labour markets, um, that there was a fear that it, into the future, um, uh, if, uh, as the government wanted more people in, in paid work, that would not be possible without igniting um, wage inflation because uh, levels, for example, of youth unemployment were, um, uh, uh, were falling and unemployment more generally uh, uh, was falling. So the government was searching for, for, for other groups of people that they could bring into um, competition for uh, paid, uh, uh, paid employment, disabled people one of those groups, low mothers, were another, uh, uh, were, were, were another group that um, in the 2000s were um, targeted uh, in terms of um, uh, conditionality um, uh, 
and, uh, and so on. Um, it was introduced in 2008, just on the cusp of the North Atlantic economic crisis. Um, so a design talked about um, uh, in fairly benign economic times, introduced on the cusp of the uh, 2008 economic crisis. But that wasn't seen as being a, being a reason for, for delaying or halting the introduction uh, of a system that would reduce the incomes of disabled people and would increase the conditionality placed upon them. It was seen as being a reason for doing that, that it would be even more important uh, um, to, uh, to, to introduce employment and support allowance. So, uh, uh, yeah, um, in front of sort of allowance, I'm going to call it ESA from now on, replaces um, the previous incapacity benefit um, uh, as a means, as we'll see, of sorting or classifying uh, uh, um, uh, people did presenting themselves as being disabled uh, into, uh, uh, in, into different uh, recipient uh, groups or, 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 or classifications of uh, um, recipients. Um, and this was concerned really with managing what, what were kind of deemed to be the risks of disabled people outside of uh, paid employment. And then we can think about the economic risks, so the direct costs of, um, uh, of, uh, of disabled people, um, the amount of benefits they receive, for example, um, per week. Uh, and also at a macroeconomic level, as I said, the kind of concern um, of governments was, was particularly around the supply of labour um, uh, uh, and how um, uh, in, in future years the, the, there needed to be uh, an increase in, in the numbers of people co competing for paid work if wage inflation was to be constrained. And then the kind of, um, uh, what, what you might uh, concept, what were conceptualised as being the social risks of uh, disabled people outside of wage labour, in particular kind of notions of dependency and the intergenerational reproduction um, of, of, of dependency. So the, so the uh, 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 if, if you like, the, the um, uh, parents uh, who were receiving disability benefits kind of passing on that kind of um, uh, or uh, that kind of sick role, if you like, to, to their children. Their children not understanding actually their role in society would be to earn, uh, uh, to earn a wage. No evidence that that actually occurred, but, the, but in many ways what we're dealing with um, uh, in terms of um, uh, uh, social, social security policy in the UK is competing ideas, not really competing evidence um, uh, at all. It's about ideology uh, more, than, uh, more than evidence. So, um, uh, ESA is based upon uh, judgments about capability to do wage labour. Um, they are central to kind of um, sorting uh, uh, people presenting as disabled into different uh, um, uh, uh, classifications. Um, and um, what we'll see is called the work capability assessment sorts people into three categories. Um, essentially, those people who um, in, the, uh, in the UK system are just deemed to be unemployed. Um, so there are people that um, have uh, no limited capability for wage labour, so they're deemed at the time of, of, of their um, work capability assessment to be able to go out to, um, to work, and they, they either have to go to work or they claim um, UK's unemployment benefit, job seekers allowance, uh, it's called. Um, then there's a group uh, of people that, okay, um, are accepted at the time of their assessment as having a limited capability to do uh, 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 wage labour, um, but still they can make efforts to get back into work as soon as, as, soon as possible. And the, the expectation is, most of which is mandatory, um, that they will engage in activity to, uh, 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 to do that. So they might, they might be um, uh, uh, um, told to attend some kind of work experience um, programme or to attend a workshop in, on can we improve your CV and so, uh, and so on. If they don't do it, they get sanctioned um, for, not, uh, for not complying. Um, and then there's a group of people that are deemed um, not only to have a li limited capability for, for, for wage labour, but a limited capability for that kind of activity that, that might hasten their um, uh, entry into, into paid, paid work. Um, and those people are placed, or they're sorted through the ESA into the support group, this group of people that are deemed to um, be able to engage in activities to, to hasten their return to work are put in what is known as the work-related um, activity group. When it was introduced, the system was deliberately designed to increase the number of people that would be excluded from disability benefits. So um, it was thought at the time 
that those people going through um, making a claim for, for, for ESA, 50% of them would be deemed to be fit enough to go to work anyway. And that was a 30% increase on the existing, um, the existing benefit. Uh, and it was thought that of those people that, that are deemed to, to, to not be fit enough to go to work, the majority would be placed in the work-related activity group. So they would be expected to make efforts to return to work um, as, soon as, uh, as soon as possible. This classification had real impacts because it determined the amount of money that, um, uh, uh, that the uh, person presented as, 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 uh, as unfit for work would actually um, uh, receive. And there's the, uh, there's the amounts. This is for a single person aged uh, over 25. We have age-related benefits um, uh, in, in the UK per, per week. So if the person was deemed to um, essentially just be unemployed rather than sick or disabled, then in 2008, they would receive £60.50 a week. A, a decade later, it's 73 quid um, a week. If they were placed in the work-related activity group um, uh, in 2008, they would have got £24 a week more, um, uh, £84. Um, 2018, you'll see there's actually been a absolute cut to the amount uh, of uh, benefit that people in that particular group, in the work-related activity group, um, receive. That's a consequence, as we'll see, of um, austerity uh, uh, measures, and deliberately designed to bring it into line with the, the, the rate of unemployment uh, um, uh, uh, benefit or, or job seekers allowance. Because the idea was, and we were talking, we had a great day yesterday with um, postgraduate students, we're talking about moral hazard um, uh, as a kind of an organising principle in social security. That is a good example of moral hazard. Yeah, the government thought that people were presenting as uh, as as being unfit for work to receive this little bit of extra um, uh, uh, benefit. So in 2015, it removed the difference um, in benefit. So there's no incentive to present uh, as being. Um, uh, 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 disabled. Those people in the support group, essentially a group of people that um, the government thought even with some kind of um, support, um, some kind of adjustment within, pay, uh, within the kind of work environment would never really get into, uh, uh, into paid work. Um, in 2008 they received a little bit more than the work-related activity group, £89 a week, uh, and in 2018 um, £110 None of it's huge amounts of money. In fact, they're very low amounts uh, of, uh, of money. It's, it, of course, excludes housing. Cost has a different system of uh, financial support for housing um, uh, in the UK. But nevertheless, £73 a week um, to, um, to, to, to support oneself on in, in, uh, for, for all your needs outside of housing is not a great deal. Uh, and I've kind of tried to do the kind of um, the Australian dollar kind of uh, um, uh, uh, equivalents, uh, equivalents there. Um, the support group looks more generous, but once again, there's not a great deal of money when we know, for example, the additional costs of being uh, uh, of, uh, uh, of disability in the UK are about five hundred and fifty pounds um, yeah. a month. So within that kind of context, uh, once again, the figures are uh, uh, incredibly, uh, incredibly low. Uh, in many ways, um, ESA was redrawing the boundaries of, the, of, of, of what Deborah Stone describes as being the disability category, to make the category um, uh, um, smaller, to make it more difficult to get into the category to receive the, um, uh, uh, the, the, the benefits um, uh, of being within the, uh, within the disability uh, category. And that um, stone in a kind of work from 1984 argues um, uh, is driven really by a fear amongst policy makers of, 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 of faux disabled people, of forced disabled people, people that presented themselves as disabled but are not really um, uh, 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 disabled. So that was uh, uh, employment and support allowance introduced deliberately to reduce the number of people who could access um, uh, disability uh, benefits and to reduce their income uh, uh, when they were uh, receiving, receiving them. 
I was introduced for a number of wage-related costs. I've kind of talked a bit about those, okay, in particular the increase in, uh, in, in what the Treasury um, uh, in the UK at the time was describing as the effective um, labour supply, what I would describe as essentially a reserve army of labour um, uh, type, uh, uh, type argument. They argued that there were essentially too many people receiving disability um, benefits, and that there were two reasons for that, so the government argued. Firstly, it was too easy to get onto the benefit. That was what they described as being the on-flow um, uh, problem. Uh, and there were several reasons there. It argued that um, people's general practitioners, their GPs, played too much of a prominent role within that process, and that they were making judgments based not upon an objective kind of assessment of the individual's uh, condition, but uh, in, a, in a kind of broader social context. For example, what's the likelihood of this person getting a job in the area in which they, um, uh, in which they live? Um, so the government thought, if you like, there was too much collusion between um, uh, claimants and GPs, so they took the GP out of, the, um, uh, out of the equation. So the GP now really has a very small role uh, uh, in terms of uh, allowing access to disability benefits for, uh, um, for people presenting as, uh, as uh, disabled or chronically, chronically sick, um, uh, and also they brought forward the timing of the, um, of the capability assessment. Um, there were various assessments uh, 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 previously. Uh, the main one they argued came too late in the kind of process. It was about six months down the line, so they brought that forward um, and is now uh, much earlier uh, in the uh, uh, in the claim. And then the other the other side of the problem they argued was that there just wasn't enough kind of pressure to, to leave disability um, benefits, okay? And that was just described as being the outflow problem. So what did they do there? They increased conditionality, increased expectations of people in that work-related activity group to get back into work um, as, soon, uh, as soon as possible. The kind of concern there was in the 1960s, about 3% of the working age population received some kind of sickness, and related benefit, it had increased to 7% by the mid 2000s. Yeah. Um, so it kind of more than doubled over a 40 year period when generally the health of the population was getting better. Yeah, so the kind of government thought, well, hang on a minute, that's something kind of uh, uh, going on um, uh, here. And once again, as we were kind of talking about yesterday, I'm afraid policy makers have a rather cynical view um, of, uh, of, of populations, ra a rather negative. Uh, view premised upon kind of classic um, uh, 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 liberal ideas that everybody should be kind of um, self-sustaining and essentially those people who are not are faking it yeah, to receive easy, uh, uh, easy, easy money. Um, uh, and I've also talked about kind of the number of people that was kind of, there were desire there was a desire in a kind of in, a, in and to be fair in kind of in a social kind of democratic. Kind of mode, a desire to get as many people into paid work to pay for um, uh, uh, um, uh, benefits and services, just not those for disabled um, people. So, desire to shift, as I said, resources to, to, to help support the aging population that, that many countries are kind of um, uh, 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 attempting to address um, to support the NHS in the, in the UK, the National Health Service. Um, to support education and to support attempts to reduce child child poverty, but to do that it was essentially a zero sum game. So money had to be shifted from one group of people to those kind of um, uh, to those to those other areas. Um, and in many ways, or kind of, I think the kind of uh, or my argument would be that those kinds of arguments were framed by a mistaken assumption. That wage labour in, in, in what was widely described as being the knowledge economy was much easier for disabled people um, compared to, uh, 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 to com compared to the, the economy uh, kind of premised upon physical um, uh, kind of kind of labour, um, and that is a mistake. Yeah, in many ways, the kind of work has got more intense um, uh, as we've seen today. Actually, technology can be exclusionary um, uh, uh, in, in, in the sense of. Uh, 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 it, it disabilises people with particular, uh, uh, with particular um, uh, uh, disabilities, um, and the kind of the, this this notion of, of the knowledge economy 
and was in many ways built into this new assessment of people's ability to work. So there are kind of questions about people's ability to use a mouse, um, for instance, or to be able to sit for long periods of time at a work, um, at a workstation. Okay, so they came to frame the, uh, the 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 main means in which access to disability benefits were um, uh, were, were, were was to be governed. Um, there were a kind of a set of, um, as I say, kind of a set of uh, issues or uh, kind of. A, more kind of abstract um, uh, ideas, uh, I guess. Um, uh, it, the, the ESA was introduced by uh, a nominally left-wing government, yeah, the, what's described as New Labour, um, uh, uh, under kind of Tony Blair's uh, premiership in Labour on Gordon, um, Gordon Brown. Gordon Brown was actually central to all of this because he'd kind of taken responsibility for the benefits while he was, a, uh, while he was the uh, Chancellor of the Exchequer um, at, the, uh, at the Treasury. Um, and the kind of the ideas there really that kind of framed um, uh, uh, Labour's general approach to, to, to social security was a kind of sense of contractualism. So this kind of um, the the demands that were made of people to kind of um, to, to hasten their return to work was described as being support for those for those people. And the kind of the idea of this contractualist. Um, kind of approach that uh, Labour was taking was essentially, well, if we're going to kind of introduce support for people, then they must be kind of mandated to, uh, 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 to take, to avail themselves of that support. So if we're going to provide them with something, then they've got to do something to receive their, to receive their benefits. So very much a kind of contractual and, uh, 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 um, uh, obligation uh, in many ways, underpinning, uh, underpinning changes to um, disability benefits. But also, kind of, you can see within the kind of arguments of, uh, of, of new Labour governments, kind of mutualistic um, uh, uh, kind of ideas that essentially, well, I'm afraid people are just going to have to be responsible. They're going to have to be responsible for themselves. And, and for working age people, the main way of demonstrating responsibility is through paid, um, paid employment. Yeah. Inclusion through paid employment. And there's people kind of, such as Ruth Levitas, um, uh, 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 Argue, um, and then kind of there was also underpinning new kind of new labour ideas, um, kind of a, a, a sense of paternalism. Yeah, that actually those people who are receiving benefits, disabled people uh, included, they probably know that they should go to work. They're just a bit defeated at the moment. Very much a Lawrence Mead, and we were talking about Lawrence Mead yesterday um, uh, uh, in our um, uh, in our in our in our session. Um, very much kind of Lawrence Mead approach of the kind of Dutiful but defeated um, uh, uh, wage, uh, wage uh, uh, workless uh, uh, disabled people. They need a bit of harassment, a bit of uh, uh, um, a bit of hassle from the state to get them uh, back into uh, back into paid uh, into paid work. So there are various ideas underpinning kind of all of this uh, uh, change to um, uh, employment and support allowance. It had fundamental. Um, uh, problems, um, particularly for the disabled people's movement, it's premised upon a medical model um, uh, of, of disability, which kind of focused upon individualising um, uh, the reasons why people were not in, uh, 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 in wage labour, rather than looking at the barriers that those people faced. Employers in particular were um, just not visible uh, in any of these debates, even though we know um, uh, employers dis discriminate against um, uh, disabled people and in the UK are legally able to do that if they can kind of show a reasonable business case for, for um, discriminating against uh, uh, disabled uh, people. So no account of kind of social uh, barriers to, uh, to, to, to wage labour. Um, it was premised upon an impoverishment of disabled people, reduced benefit levels compared to what came um, before. before um, support for uh, spouses, long-term additions um, that were made to um, disability benefits and age-related additions were all removed um, from the system. And we are talking about thousands of pounds a year removed from, uh, uh, from uh, uh, payments uh, to new claimants. This was never done retrospectively. It was always done for new, uh, for new claimants. Um, and the increase of conditionality and sanctioning up until um, the 2000s disabled people never faced conditionality um, uh, 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 or, or sanction. They received their benefits, 
and that was it. There was no expectation, for example, that they would return uh, to work and no mechanism to enforce that they should, they shouldn't uh, return uh, to work. Um, and in addition, there are a whole set of administrative um, uh, 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 problems, um, problems with decision making, an appeal rate of over 50%, 75% of which uh, were found in favour of, <coughs> of the person appealing. So um, really, it's a, really a policy um, that actually kind of created fear and anxiety because it was never clear what the outcome of the whole system was going to be. And there's lots of research uh, in the UK now that suggests that um, many disabled people uh, have a fear of, I should say, brown envelope there, not brown envelope, a fear of the brown envelope dropping through the door, which is the invitation to go for a work capability um, uh, uh, assessment. Um, because um, they know, uh, uh, those, uh, those people who receive it, that the aim of that really is to, to see how they might be removed from receiving their benefit. And there's no consistency or a lack of consistency in terms of um, decision making. Um, in many ways, the whole process is, is flawed. In government terms, though, it's kind of working okay. It's working okay. But for those people who actually have to engage with it, it's a deeply problematic um, uh, uh, system. Um, so that was its introduction, and then since 2010, um, there's been a kind of a whole set of measures that um, themselves have kind of reduced even further, as we saw uh, in that slide a while ago, the income of, um, uh, of, 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 of benefits for disabled people. Um, 2010, the then coalition government, Conservative Liberal Democrat, announced £18 billion savings from the social protection budget just to come from working age people. Um, uh, uh, retirement pensioners were excluded um, uh, from from that, so a fairly narrow kind of set of um, uh, uh, recipients to uh, uh, from whom 18 billion pounds would be would be saved. Um, for ESA, what that meant in, in particular was an increased use of, of, of means testing um, uh, to save uh, uh, at least 1.5 billion pounds a year by. Uh, 2014-15. Then in 2015, another set of another wave of um, austerity measures announced. This was the first Conservative um, budget in the UK for 18 um, years, and that removed the work-related activity component um, of uh, ESA, saving £640 million pounds a year to, to uh, 2021. And after that, it's about a billion pounds um, uh, 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 a year. Hence that kind of, as we saw in that slide earlier, um, that, that, that lowering of the uh, uh, um, benefit for the people in the work-related activity grew from 84 to 73 pounds um, a week. So an absolute cut to, uh, uh, to benefits for people in that particular, um, uh, in the, in that particular group. Um, and, then, and, that, and that was in those kind of specific measures for disabled people we're in the context of wider um, cuts to, um, to benefits. Um, I'm just going to highlight one of them, and there have been a whole range, um, but changes in particular to the uprating um, of benefits that used to be done to um, a particular uh, measure of inflation. Um, between when was it, 20, 20, um, 2013 and 2015, so three years, um, benefits for disabled people were capped at a 1% increase and then for four years after that they were frozen in cash cash terms. So you've got um, uh, kind of uh, 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 falling real incomes there um, as well because of inflation. Um, those, that measure alone took out, it's a kind of estimated about 6% of, uh, of what would have been the case had um, uh, uh, benefits increased with uh, within, with inflation. With the coalition government, um, as I said, uh, conditionality was introduced by uh, Labour governments in the 2000s for disabled people, which is deepened. It was deepened by the coalition um, from 2013, and there was an 84% increase in the use of sanctions, for example, um, uh, against uh, 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 people receiving um, uh, uh, ESA. And all this occurred in a broader set of cuts to um, uh, um, budgets and services affecting um, uh, disabled people, primarily those kind of uh, services provided by 
um, local, uh, local authorities. So care, cuts to care budgets, um, for example. Um, you know, one, one doesn't want to kind of have a, a league table of who is the most kind of um, uh, uh, affected by cuts, but there is, it is undoubtedly the case that disabled people have faced some of the most severe cuts um, uh, to, uh, to benefits. Um, it was estimated, for example, um, that between 2010 and 2015, collectively disabled people would lose £9 billion um, uh, in terms of uh, income, and then the uh, uh, Equalities and Human Rights Commission um, looked at all the tax and benefit changes that have been announced between 2010 and 2017 to see what their impact would be by 2021. And there's the um, the figure. So uh, a household with a disabled adult and a, and a disabled child would lose uh, £5,500 a year, about 15% um, of, its, uh, of its income. Um, those with just a disabled child would lose um, about £3,300. Uh, £3, uh, households with a disabled adult, £2,400. Non-disabled uh, 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 households, £1,000. So you can kind of see the impact there um, upon uh, uh, disabled um, households. So, kind of moving on then, just from thinking about what's actually happened to the um, uh, uh, to the to, to the impacts, um, as I, as I kind of was highlighting at the beginning, the uh, disabled people's movement has been kind of central to highlighting the harms that have, uh, uh, that have resulted from this this wave after wave of cuts to uh, to benefits for. Uh, disabled people. Um, so, uh, disabled people's movements, for example, have kind of um, uh, have published either online or in, in, in hard copy, kind of lists of people um, that have died, um, probably not as a consequence of their of their work capability assessment, but very soon after. So, often in the UK, what happens is you kind of the work capability assessment deems people to be fit for work, and then a week or two later, people die, and, you, and, and there is obviously a dissonance. There, how can how can that actually be? Um, how can that actually be uh, uh, the case? And we know that, um, that kind of in, in not such extreme cases, um, that people go for their work capability assessment to have kind of quite um, a, a profound or chronic um, uh, conditions and kind of come out and now deemed to be um, essentially unemployed rather than uh, rather than uh, uh, disabled. So we've got things like Callum's list uh, online. We are Spartacus, um, uh, have kind of have cr uh, created a document of, 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 of what kind of dis described as welfare reform deaths um, up until uh, uh, 2015. Uh, remember the dead of Facebook uh, 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 based uh, lists of people uh, who have uh, who have died, where there has been some kind of relationship to the to to um, cuts to their benefits or the imposition of sanctioning um, and, uh, and so on. Uh, beyond the disabled people's movement, um, there's been a range of, uh, of kind of from a range of research, you can kind of see the harms that these cuts are doing. So, Barr and colleagues, for every 10,000 work capability uh, assessments, and that's the assessment that, that, that determines um, uh, whether people are fit for work, whether or not they could, um, uh, whether or not they should kind of make the efforts to get into work or whether or not they should be exempt from those efforts. For every, for every 10,000 work capability assessments, there's six additional suicides, 2,700 reported cases of mental health problems, and 7,000 antidepressant items um, uh, are prescribed. But Manus and um, uh, uh, colleagues found that six to the, about two-thirds of uh, ESA recipients had thought about killing uh, themselves, uh, and nearly half of those uh, had attempted uh, to do so, compared to 21%, 22%, and 6 or 7% of the general um, population. These are shocking, shocking figures, shocking uh, figures. Um, Marx and colleagues who did qualitative uh, research with uh, ESA um, recipients uh, argued that in the context of hostile political and public um, discourses, um, the, the experience of receiving ESA was deeply disruptive 
Um, uh, it was worsening um, uh, meant the stress that were, people were uh, living in and for some leading to suicidal thoughts, which kind of supports the McManus and the Barr and colleagues' uh, findings uh, as, uh, as well. And as I said earlier on, there are kind of coroner's um, reports and inquests, uh, coroner's comments and uh, inquest reports that highlight uh, austerity now in the UK as being in an element in, in the deaths uh, of um, uh, of individuals. I was doing a similar um, presentation to this um, uh, uh, at the uh, Westminster Parliament um, uh, in the UK. I was invited by the um, Taxpayers Against Poverty, um, which is a, an organisation that um, attempts to, in, in the UK there's a quite a powerful organisation called the Taxpayers Alliance that are there to argue constantly for tax cuts, yeah, or to highlight what they see as being problematic uh, spending. The taxpayers against poverty is to kind of counter that, yeah, that we need taxes to address um, uh, kind of a range of uh, social issues. So I was doing a, a similar talk to this, invited by the taxpayers against poverty. There were no well, there were one or two politicians there, um, uh, but only but only one or two. But what was most important is that actually afterwards the sister of um, uh, of, of, of one of the one of the people. It's kind of a fairly. Um, uh, 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 infamous uh, case uh, in the UK um, uh, came to talk to me. Um, her brother um, died with three pounds forty-four in his bank account. He was diabetic. He couldn't afford to keep his electricity on, so he couldn't keep his insulin cool um, uh, uh, in uh, in his fridge. Um, so she she wanted, and, and quite rightly so in my opinion, she wanted the Department for Working just to take some responsibility for a brother's death because he'd been sanctioned. Um, but because he had three pounds forty-four in his bank, the coroner said that it was his choice. It was his choice not to eat. He could have eaten something with that three pounds forty-four, ignoring the uh, the fact he could keep his internet um, at call uh, and so on. Uh, so in that case, kind of it, the. the the, 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 if you like, the, the, ec the economic, the social and economic conditions in which that guy was living was not accepted, but there, are, there have been coroners who have been willing um, to, to highlight the role of sanctioning, of cuts in their reports. As I say, kind of reports about bo bo body mass um, index being so low that it's been unable to sustain um, life um, uh, and, so, uh, and so on. So we've got a whole Kind of for me, kind of a whole range of evidence now that um, uh, cuts are caused in the, in the kind of context of this um, this symposium of social suffering, really of the most extreme forms, yeah, the most extreme uh, uh, forms. Um, and I guess w w what then became interesting for me is how do we kind of how how in, a, in kind of policy terms, in academic terms, do we kind of understand that, and do we talk about, and do we conceptualise? Um, uh, and as a consequence of that, I kind of turned to the work of Johan Gortung uh, around structural um, uh, uh, violence. Uh, and Gortung argues that violence, kind of getting away from that kind of um, you know, common sense notion of violence as kind of being interpersonal and individualised. His argument is that violence is essentially the difference between the potential and the, uh, and the actual, the difference between the what is and the what could have been. Yeah. And for me, that's really important in terms of social policy. Because of course, what really social policy analysts should be concerned about is what could have been. What, what are we aspiring, uh, what are we aspiring to um, uh, 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 in terms of uh, social, uh, uh, social and economic protections uh, for, uh, for people. Uh, so Gautang argues, that violence um, uh, uh, can be understood as acts where the detrimental impacts are both known and avoidable. And once again, we can kind of apply that to, um, uh, uh, to uh, disability um, benefits. The long-term impacts of poverty, of destitution, have been known for hundreds of years. It's not new. None of it's uh, new. As we're kind of going to kind of use Engels from the 19th century, Engels kind of understood uh, 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 the impact of, uh, of, of, uh, of poverty and destitution on working 
people. He wasn't the only person kind of working on those issues in the, uh, in the mid uh, 19th century. He was doing practical work on them, but there were there were um, others uh, as well. So the long-term impacts of poverty, destitution, have been known for a long time, and there was evidence from the very outset of the um, uh, uh, employment support allowance that it was going to harm disabled people. Yeah. If your idea is you want to take out um, uh, uh, from receiving disability benefits an additional third of people, that suggests there's going to be cut off from the very uh, from the very beginning. And the disabled people's um, uh, uh, movement or, or organisations were in it were, were, were very much highlighting this from the very beginning of um, ESA, from the very time it was actually um, it was actually um, announced. And there were a, a, a series of um, government um, sponsored reviews of the work capability assessment, although they were nominally um, independent. But the very first one of those highlighted the problems that it was causing for disabled people. And by the time it got to its fifth, many of those problems still haven't been um, sorted out. They still aren't sorted out today, um, actually. So many of, much of what is going on in terms of the treatment of disabled people um, in this whole process, no, and it is absolutely um, uh, uh, avoidable. So that's violence kind of, kind of generally. Structural violence built into the structure, um, so this is according to, 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 to Gaultang, built into the structure and shows up in unequal power and consequently as unequal life uh, chances. Now I would argue that ESA is creating unequal um, uh, life uh, life chances. It's, it's um, kind of killing some people, it's maiming uh, 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 some, uh, some people um, because it is um, kind of adding to disabled um, inequality, poverty, and destitution um, uh, in, in, the, uh, uh, in the UK. It's contributing to falling living standards. We've seen the, the figures for, um, uh, uh, for, for many disabled people. It's contributing to precarious. Um, uh, wage labour. That was the point of uh, ESA, to push more disabled people into closer relationships to uh, the labour market. Deliberately designed to attempt to manage wage inflation. In other words, to keep wages as low um, uh, as possible, as low as possible around minimum wage regulation um, uh, in the UK. And as I said, it's creating stress, anxiety, it's contributing um, uh, to the mental dis distress that many people who receive ESA are living. It's contributing to that, it's exacerbating that. And there's lots of evidence to show that that, um, that is the case. Uh, and of course, linked to um, uh, disabilizing inequality and, uh, and poverty, we also know that ESA is contributing to isolation uh, within the community. People can't afford now to kind of um, to do those things that they did in the past and do things that we might all expect. Uh, to, uh, uh, to do. So for me, the ESA is a good example of um, uh, uh, structural, structural violence um, because it undermines what could, what could be um, uh, in, in society. The, kind of the, uh, uh, um, the more uh, equitable um, uh, treatment of disabled people uh, mean, a means of um, ensuring that disabled people flourish uh, in society rather than being essentially pushed to the margins um, because that seems to be economically and socially burdensome. Um, I also think that kind of uh, the killing um, and the maiming of disabled people can be understood through uh, um, Engels' ideas on social, uh, social murder. So there's a quote from uh, Engels there, when society deprives thousands of the necessities of life, places them under conditions in which they cannot live, knows that thousands of victims must perish and yet permits these conditions to remain, its deed is murder, just as surely as the deed of the single individual. Okay? Of course, Engels was talking about the role of the bourgeoisie um, uh, in, in the murder of uh, 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 the proletariat. Okay? Um, more recently, those kind of ideas have been um, uh, uh, adopted to understand the role of the state in various um, uh, activities. So 
uh, uh, Chernamas and Hudson, for example, um, in their kind of critique of uh, conservative uh, economics, argue that various states essentially allow corporations to kill a proportion of their consumers. Yeah, and you can think about that. Smoke. Um, petrochemical uh, uh, industry, the design of cars, which have been uh, problematic in the past, the design of tyres, and so on uh, and so forth. Um, and in many ways, those, those things, some of those things are still continuing. Um, but their kind of argument is that the, 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 the lobbying of the kind of conservative, the support of, con of conservative economics, free market economics, neoliberalism, perhaps, um, uh, 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 even is so powerful that it's very difficult for states to kind of to, to quickly counter um, uh, 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 the uh, 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 the activities of large corporations. And then Steve Toombs's uh, work um, from uh, from the UK. This kind of argument is that uh, um, over the past kind of decade, there's been um, an ideo ideological objection to regulation um, uh, in, in the UK, kind of business. Um, business regulation, attempts to cut what is euphemistically known as red tape um, uh, uh, in, in, in the UK. You know, kind of protections for, um, for working people, um, uh, in particular protections for, uh, for consumers, cuts to local authority budgets. Local authorities would have the duty to um, deal with um, uh, issues around um, uh, uh, regulation. Uh, and privatisation, where essentially regulation becomes kind of self-policing of um, organisation. What Toombs is arguing is that those kind of changes, uh, those fundamental changes to, um, uh, to, to, to regulation are impacting upon um, issues around pollution, uh, issues around workers' uh, protection um, whilst they are at work, uh, and uh, impacting upon things like food safety um, in restaurants and, um, uh, and takeaways, and is resulting in harm and, in some instances, death uh, uh, to, uh, to individuals. So, kind of the way that I've kind of, uh, uh, kind of developed that, I guess, or, or, or kind of taken those ideas, is to understand the austerity faced by um, uh, uh, disabled people. Um, as I say, it's not just disabled people. Disabled people do seem to be uh, uh, the group of people that have, that have uh, faced the most harm. Um, certainly the most uh, severe levels of, uh, uh, of cuts. Um, again, the impacts are known and avoidable. Yeah. Uh, as we've seen, we know what the impacts are of people living in poverty, people um, in, 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 in destitution. The, the evidence there, um, and it's been around for a while, um, suggested the links between um, a, a, an increasingly brutal benefit regime uh, and, and um, uh, people killing themselves, um, and destitution, and death through um, uh, uh, destitution. Um, now that kind of raises the issue about whether or not the intention uh, of the state is to kill people. Would the state want to kill disabled people? And I include it because it's an issue in particular in the UK for the disabled people's uh, movement, some of whom uh, argue quite strongly that they feel the state is deliberately trying to kill um, disabled people through um, wave after wave of cuts to uh, incomes, to budgets that kind of help to support um, other needs of disabled uh, 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 people. And that's where, if you remember, we started off with those pictures, that kind of dead people don't claim comes from, yeah? If they're dead, then the state has no more responsibility than cost them. Um, uh, anything. I guess my kind of concern with that argument is that actually disabled people do do things that the state quite likes. They do consume, for example, although of course their incomes um, uh, are going down. They do provide other people with work, yeah, and people to assess whether or not they're fit for work. We were talking about this. Um, Yesterday, there are 20,000 people who work for the private sector in the UK um, on kind of um, return to work type schemes. If you went back kind of two decades, there wouldn't be anybody working on that type of, that type of scheme. So it, 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 
people receiving benefits create work for other people, other people, often professional people, yeah, the, the, the uh, thousands of um, health professionals that are required to, um, uh, to assess and say from people's ability to, uh, 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 or not, to, to engage uh, in wage, uh, in wage labour. Um, and there is another uh, benefit which I haven't talked about, which is the additional cost benefit, it's called personal independence payment. Um, in the UK, it has a similar assessment. So there are kind of two assessments, there are two lots of different professionals kind of engaged um, uh, uh, in, assessing, uh, in, in assessing people. And it is, uh, as we kind of um, talked about throughout really, um, disabled people are thought to have, are believed to have macroeconomic um, uh, impacts. So the more disabled people you can get into competing for paid work, for example, the more you are likely to be able to, to maintain downward pressure on, uh, on, on wage levels. So I'm kind of a bit equivocal there. In, in, in some senses, um, I can kind of see the argument of, of the disabled people's movement, but also we must recognise that actually disabled people have some value if you want, to, um, uh, to, uh, to, 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 to the state and the broader, uh, and the broader economy. Um, Engels argues that social murder is an offence more of omission than commission. Um, that social murder is, is more, um, if you like, a, um, an, a, an offence of kind of exclusion, of not acting. And in many ways, that's what we see um, here. I don't think kind of policy makers sat down and thought, actually, if we cut and cut and cut uh, employment support allowance, that would kill uh, and maim um, people. I just think they're indifferent to the consequences cuts that they actually that they actually make. And I think that kind of fits in nicely with uh, Rummel's argument, who kind of um, uh, 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 kind of conceptualizes death by the state um, as uh, a kind of um, uh, death by the state has been a consequence of the reckless and wanton disregard for those of the lives uh, sorry for the lives of those um, uh, uh, affected. So what we've got here essentially is a failure to protect the poorest disabled um, people, not necessarily a deliberate kind of strategy to kill them, but just an indifference amongst policy makers. Probably a belief that actually you can make these cuts it won't really harm uh, disabled people uh, very, very much. So conclusions, I've probably gone massively over time. Um, uh, uh, ESA was introduced essentially as a means of commodifying the labour power of the majority of uh, uh, of disabled people, to bring disabled people closer into labour markets, to increase the effectiveness of disabled people to compete for uh, wage labour. That further, those further ways of, of, of austerity in 2010 and 2015 um, uh, had kind of similar um, political economic uh, 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 concerns. Commodification this time though through impoverishment, and um, very much through Essentially, a poor what in the UK I'll describe as a poor lawry approach to uh, uh, dealing with um, uh, the income of disabled people. Um, if you want people to go to work, then essentially you've got to keep them poor when they're out of work, otherwise they're not going to want to go to work. Once again, that kind of classic liberal um, uh, 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 idea. Um, but I think kind of what I've tried to argue today is austerity, to which they could have been exposed, can be understood as a form of social, of, of, of structural violence, harms that are known and avoidable, the reproduction of uh, unequal life chances for uh, disabled people, and it could be so different uh, um, uh, to that, and it can be understood as social murder. The lives of poor people don't matter that much, there's an indifference uh, amongst policy makers, policy makers and death and harm are kind of a consequence of the exclusion that kind of those policy makers are essential. Okay.